Hello, my name is Stefan Druskat. I am a fellow of the Software Sustainability Institute and a doctoral researcher in computer science at the German Aerospace Center. In this video, I will demonstrate a proof of concept version of the Hermes software publication tool. We develop Hermes to automate the publication of your research software together with metadata. But why should you bother to publish your software in the first place? Software publication is important because it enables at least four different things. When you publish your software, other people can more easily reproduce research that has been done with it because the software has been archived and can be referred to via a persistent identifier. You can also more easily get academic credit for your software work as citation information is available in the publication. Because your software is archived at publication, it may be available for a longer time and therefore become more sustainable. And finally, software publication with rich metadata is a great way of making your software fair. The last point, compliance with a fair for research software principles, leads us directly to the topic of software metadata. There are many types of metadata available in your source code repository, such as contribution metadata from the version control system itself. In addition, you may have a citation.cff file with citation metadata or a code meta file describing your software. There is also the metadata from the repository platform, such as the number of issues, downloads, etc. And metadata from other tools you use for development, such as continuous integration or static code analysis. The concept behind Hermes is to collect these metadata from the source code repository and publish them together with software artifacts. Or publish only the metadata so that even closed source software can be made fair. In the Hermes workflow, you push a version of your software that you want to publish to the repository and perhaps give it a tag. The tag triggers the continuous integration system to run the Hermes software publication tool. The tool harvests the available metadata and processes it to create a unified set of metadata for the software version. These metadata can then be curated and are finally published to a target publication repository, such as Zenodo, where the version gets a persistent identifier and is archived. All five steps are extensible through plugins, so that you can add new sources to the harvesting step, new merging strategies and processing logic to the processing step, new integrations with systems that can help you curate the metadata and the software publication in the curation step, new publication platforms and instances in the deposit step, and new post-processing steps, for example, writing metadata back to the source code repository in the post-processing step. So let's have a look at how to set up and use Hermes to automate your software publication process. Please note that I'm demonstrating an early version of the Hermes software publication tool that's not yet fully implemented, it has not been published itself. The Hermes software publication tool is implemented as a command line tool, so I'm going to start by running it locally to show you how it works step by step. First of all, I'm cloning an example repository that I have prepared. You can follow along this demo video if you like to get some hands-on experience with Hermes. The repository contains a simple readme file and two metadata files, citation.cff that contains the necessary metadata to cite my project and a code meta.json that contains further descriptive metadata. At the current state, Hermes harvests metadata from these two sources and additionally, the Git version control system. Next, I prepare a Python virtual environment to install the proof of concept version of Hermes in. You need a Python 3 version equal to or larger than 3.10 to use Hermes. Next, I update pip and install Hermes directly from its Git repository. The installation instructions are available from the readme in the Hermes Git repository on GitHub, and that's where I get the instructions from. Now that the Hermes package is installed, we can have a look at the Hermes command it provides and what subcommands and parameters there are. As you can see, there are subcommands for the currently four out of five workflow steps that you've seen earlier. Harvest, process, curate, and deposit. Post-processing is not yet implemented, but will be by the end of this year. Let's run the first command, Hermes harvest. This harvests metadata from the three metadata sources supported in this early version, citation file format files, code meta files, and the Git version control system. As you can see, running the command has created a new directory called .hermes. Let's have a look at it. It has a single subdirectory called harvest, which contains the harvest metadata. Hermes harvests them into its own data model and serializes the model's JSON. For each metadata source, there is a JSON file that contains the metadata, the name of the metadata key and its position in an array if it's a list element, the value of the metadata, and some provenance information about the source of the metadata point, the harvester plugin that was used, and the time of harvesting. For each harvesting plugin that was run, there is also a file collecting the linked data contexts that were used to schematize the metadata. These contexts can provide metadata fields and the type of their values. Hermes uses an extended version of the code meta schema internally, and per default, its own linked data context. Let's have a look what comes after harvesting. 
The next step is processing. In this step, Hermes takes the harvested metadata and tries to unify it. When it comes across issues with the metadata, such as different values for the same field that may come from different sources, it notifies the user of these issues. The issues can then be solved by fixing them at source and running harvest and process again, or in the next step. We won't have to do this as the example repository does not contain any conflicting metadata. The Hermes process command has created its own subdirectory in the .hermes directory. This subdirectory contains a JSON file that contains the unified metadata harvested from the different metadata sources. The subdirectory also contains a file called tags.json, which contains provenance information for every single metadata field in the metadata file. This is the point where the unified metadata file can be curated to see if the information it contains is correct, complete, and ready for publication. Once the metadata is curated and ready, we can run the next subcommand, Hermes curate, to prepare for publication. Again, running this subcommand creates a new subdirectory in the .hermes directory that contains a JSON file with a curated metadata. We can now proceed to the final step, that is depositing the metadata and the artifacts from our example project in a publication repository. The GitHub repository for the example project contains issues that are now closed that describe what you need to do if you want to follow along. For this demo, we want to publish our example project to the Zenodo Sandbox, which is an instance of the Zenodo Open Access Repository for trying things out without creating publications in the real world. We need to configure the Hermes software publication tool so that it will deposit in Zenodo Sandbox. Issue number one describes how to do this. We need to create a configuration file for Hermes called hermes.toml and configure it to use the Invenio depositing plugin because Zenodo is based on the Invenio RDM platform. Also, we need to provide some details such as the URL for the publication repository and the pass for the API endpoints and Zenodo's metadata schema. The Hermes configuration file should also be versioned together with our source code and so we commit it. We also need a personal access token from Zenodo Sandbox to authenticate with the repository. We can get this from the Zenodo Sandbox website by logging in and then going to the Applications section in our user account where we create such a token. We need to copy the access token. In this case, I put it in a file simply called token that of course isn't committed to version control. And now we're ready to publish our software for the first time. To do this, we use the command Hermes deposit. This command has two parameters, auth token to define the authentication token that should be used for talking to Zenodo Sandbox, and file, which can be used to specify what file or files should be deposited together with the metadata. In our case, we want to publish only the readme file for now. When we run Hermes deposit with the respective parameters, the publication is created in Zenodo Sandbox. The command also returns the information that the deposit was successful and gives us the URL for the record on Zenodo Sandbox. At this stage, we save the record ID that makes up the last element of the URL because we want to use it again later. When we now reload the upload page on Zenodo Sandbox, we can see that a publication has been created and that it contains metadata from our harvested sources. In Zenodo and Zenodo Sandbox, publications of the same project can be linked together to signify that they are different versions of the same project. To link future releases and publications of our example project to the same collection, we need to let Hermes know the record ID that we have saved earlier. We do this by configuring the deposit step for Invenio and pasting the save record ID as value for the respective configuration field. This is also described in issue two in the example repository. Of course, we need to push this change to our Git repository. Now, finally, we want to automate the publication of future versions whenever we tag a commit and push the tag to GitHub. To do this, we set up a GitHub Actions workflow that runs Hermes. This is described in issue three in the example project repository. First, we create a new GitHub action file in a folder called .github slash workflows. We then configure the GitHub action to run whenever a Git tag is pushed. What it does is the same that we have done locally on the command line. Harvest and process the metadata, mark the metadata as curated, and deposit it on Zenodo Sandbox. But this time with a link to the already published version. We also need to give GitHub our access token for Zenodo Sandbox so that it can create publications on our behalf. We do this by navigating to the section Settings, Secrets and Variables, Actions in our GitHub repository, create a new repository secret for authentication, paste our access token and save the secret. The secret is now available to our GitHub action through an environment variable. We then push the new GitHub action file to the GitHub repository. 
Now everything is set up to publish a new version of our project automatically, but we haven't done any work yet. So first we change the name of the version in the citation.cff file so that Zenodo uses this. If we don't do this, Zenodo will realize we're trying to publish the same version twice and will not accept the deposit. Then we emulate some real work by making a small change in our readme file. Once both changes have been pushed, it's time to release our new version and let Hermes publish it automatically to Zenodo Sandbox. We give the last commit a tag and push the tag to GitHub. And because we have configured the GitHub action to run Hermes whenever a tag is pushed, this now happens and we can see the action running Hermes and making the publication in the Actions tab on GitHub. And ta-da, everything has worked and we now have a new automatically published version on Zenodo Sandbox, which is linked to the same project so that we can also see the previously published version of the publication. This concludes the demo, but if you're interested to learn more about the Hermes project and when the first stable complete release will be out, please have a look at the project website. Or if you have questions or ideas or want to learn more or get a live version of this demo, please talk to me during Collaborations Workshop 2023. Thanks and have a great workshop.